live here because they said that we really like to collaborate with our colleague centers. Um, not only at the CGI level, we discussed that this morning, but also directly as centers together. And, uh, and really also, you and you, your CIAT has links with Mexico activities, but um, you want to visit Sagarpa and things, contacted me, that's the way we want to operate also, so that we went together this morning to Sagarpa to see how we can strengthen CIMIT, but also CIAT work uh, together in, uh, in Mexico. I must say it was a very good meeting. Also, uh, it, it, it's you know, it's going to be very interesting to see what's going to happen also with Mazagro. Um, but this meeting this morning was very positive, uh, also on the development. So, and on Wednesday, we will jointly have a meeting uh, also with INIFAP to see how we can work together also further with INIFAP in this program. So that's great. But Ruben, welcome back, I must say. Because um, uh, Ruben, uh, of course you all know him, he's Director General of SEAT, seven years, six years right now. And uh, in Colombia, we have an office there. I'm learning day by day because I didn't know so much, but I'm going to visit it soon. And um, basically working on a very broad range of crops, as you all know, tropical crops. SEAT is uh, also grown in the last years, 120 million you said. So it's close to, uh, to our organization in that sense. And he did his PhD here at CIMIT. So who met Ruben when he was here for his PhD? See? You are so young. Hans, <laughs> Ravi. So you see how young we are. Good. And you're still young as well, so uh, <laughs> right? In that sense. So um, but he did a PhD uh, at CIMIT here in Mexico and Guatemala. He is from Uruguay and uh, did a BSc uh, in Uruguay and a master in Minnesota, in your PhD as well. Uh, so conducted here, but in Minnesota supervised. So um, he was also at the CGIR Science Council. Like me, he is also responsible for some of the issues that we have in the CGIR right now. Well, we don't feel responsible, right? And uh, we try always to, to solve problems in that sense, and uh, we still do. But uh, he was also a donor. And that's also interesting to see if you have been working on both sides. Because sometimes people think when you work in a science organization, I wish I could be working for a donor organization. But let me tell you, that's tough as well. Because all these people calling you, not because they like you so much, but because they really want some money for the research. So, um, uh, but it's good to have that combination and you know what's happening. So, and we discussed also what should we discuss today? What could you present today? Of course, something about SIAT. Uh, we made an appointment that we'll also visit together the Minister of Agriculture in Colombia soon to have a sort of Mazagro type of program also in Colombia together. That would be nice. So I will see our own office in uh, Colombia then as well. But we thought we are a summit also looking broader how we're going to work in Latin America, Middle America, South America. And Bram, of course, as the official coordinator, just in time, Bram, as uh, the official coordinator of uh, man member of the management committee on uh, uh, Latin America. So we went there this morning, Bram prepared it with his uh, team uh, this morning. Uh, we were thinking about why don't you also indicate what, is, what your ideas are about the Latin American strategy of SIAT and of CIMIT as well. What we discussed this morning, it's different if you talk about Africa or about Middle and South America, because you know there are no donors for these countries anymore. And we are headquartered in uh, Latin America, both, together with uh, SIP, and you just visited Barbara as well at SIP, right, in that sense. So it's interesting to discuss also this afternoon, to hear your ideas, and also then to have a discussion on what do we think about expanding our activities in Latin America. Ruben, thanks for being here. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, please. Uh, it's a pleasure to be Thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to be back. And uh, I remember I also, I was standing here and shaking many, many years ago, delivering an external review of CIMIT, because I was also related to those famous external reviews of centers that we used to have in the past. Uh, when I was a donor uh, to, to CIMIT, uh, we had at the Inter-American Development Bank, about three or four million dollars a year, which is very small, but CIMIC was very small, so in relative, those three or four million dollars were quite high. So I, I always joke, I like my jokes, and you know, when I was here in the kitchen doing my laundry PhD as a student, I have a few friends, 
But then when I came back a few years being the donor, I have lots of friends. <laughs> Then when I went back to the Science Council to be director of the Science Council in Rome, I have very few friends. <laughs> so now my message today is that we can become friends again um, now that I am south of you. And, um, and I think, I think we, we are both celebrating 50 years. Simit, Siat, and two other centers created the CGR in 71. We were born before that. Uh, so it's time to look forward. I think the agriculture of the next 50 years as you know, it will be totally different from the one that we show our impacts, the Green Revolution and the rest. So my main message today, in case you want to disappear or you take a siesta, my main message today is that there is life after donors. <laughs> and don't tell this to the donors. We are all fundraising. But in Latin America, that is in Latin America, I think we need to prove that we, by building new alliances, with the countries themselves. Look where we are, Peru, Colombia, and Mexico. Not only the center of origin of crops, much more. Engines you know, of economic growth. I think we need to do, the paradigm has shifted. So this is not an open, uh, an academic seminar. This is just a talk and I, you know, to brainstorm. Um, <coughs> so the confusion, the current confusion of the CGR, for those of you that are very worried, we are all worried, but you know, I've been associated with the CGR for too long. I am one of those dinosaurs. I was here 30 years ago doing my thesis, and I'm still alive. So it will go through. It, you know, we will survive this. We are resilient. So in a year or two, uh, the CGR will be as beautiful as we used to know it before. It's just confusion on some management and governance level, but not on the science. Your science and our science and the science of our partners continues to go, go ahead. So there is some confusion. But I say, this is the great, the confusion time. Don't waste a crisis. This is a great opportunity to do something different, Martin. So that's why I'm here again. This is my third time in six years. I come to see him and say, let's do something different, meaning together. Yes, under the CGR umbrella, but we can work bilateral. So look, look what's, what, what, what's happening in the real world outside the CGR. Funding for research keeps growing. Private sector keeps growing. So we move this frontier on public and private complementarity farther into the future. We keep doing new things in the public sector. But we should take advantage of all of that. Nothing new for you. You know, you know about philanthropy. You just rebuild your headquarters. You, you know about that. But we in the CGR have been for 20 or 30 years, kind of, oh, that's the private sector. You still say, oh, that's the private sector. We should be together. So, Huge heterogeneity. Yes, there are $55 billion for ag research, but only a few countries invest in, in ag research. So the big story for donors is that it's not that pie for everybody. There are a few countries who really invest. They are ahead. They innovate, and they have a few million dollars invested. But the rest, very, very small. If you take Brazil out of Latin America, it's only 6%. My little country, Uruguay, is one of the few investing 2% of agricultural GDP into research, but it's a very homogeneous agriculture. So the rest, very little. So part of our work is not to work against or in collision course with the national programs, the INIFAP story here and, and, and the rest, like us in, in Colombia, is to build those national systems to see if we can grow this, this pie even larger. Um, and then in the region that I'm focusing on Latin America today, only three countries, you know, they explain 90%. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't work in the rest, but that means that it's not that, oh, they are so developed, these three, that we are only going to work in Ecuador and a few other countries. I think it's the opposite. We should embrace the Argentinas and the Mexicos and the Brazil. This is total science investment. It's not ag investment. Otherwise, uh, Colombian eyes will show up a little higher. So we should embrace them and see if we are not duplicating, if we can do things together, and so on. So look at the trends for Central America, an area that CIMIT and SIA have been working for 40 years. Our backyard, as we call it in Colombia. Uh, look, look at those investments. Wh what can you get if you invest 0.2%? So for every peso, two cents are invested into agricultural research. Huge heterogeneity and very, very low, very low investment. There are some programs still in Central America with perhaps five, six, seven PhDs. Uh, so that's our 
main, I think the main challenge that we need to confront, how to work with Mexico, how about Mexico and Colombia together with see that see it linking throughout Central America, the bridge in between the two. That's a fantastic dream that we have had for many years. So on the other side, we keep bragging about we are going to be the bread basket for the world because look at this. We are the only region with all of these fantastic, we have a lot of problems, of course, but we always show the good parts, right? We have the water and we have the biodiversity and, and so far as so. And I think it's possible. Uh, you know, the, the Llanos of Colombia is the size of Uruguay, 20 million hectares. Four million are ready to do agriculture tomorrow. So the Argentinians and the Brazilians and the companies are coming. Do we have something to do in there or not? I think we do. I think the paradigm of the CGI has to change and we really need to embrace the agribusiness, the private sector, not to do deals under the table, but to work with them and to really increase our impact. And we all benefit. So to, to start, up, since, since uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, of course, is Colombian, but he spent most of the time in Mexico, I couldn't find nothing better than a Mexico-Colombia combination here. And, and uh, so we believe a lot in magic realism, Martin, in, in Colombia. I, you know, I'm six years in Colombia now. I understand a little more Colombia, beautiful country. And magic realism is exactly that. And this is part of my hypothesis, that you can work in luck without money. It's something that, that it has to be really certain. This is to practice your Spanish. Martin is doing very good at Spanish. We were in the ministry all morning, and he, he's fast. So, so it's something that is so true, is so real, that it looks fantastic. It looks like not true. That's the magic realism. And I think, I think that's kind of the main message of what we can do together. So what, what are we doing? What are we doing in Latin America? Uh, six years ago or a few years ago, we didn't talk with the host country. Can you survive without a home? We all travel, right? You, you, you live with your suitcase, but can we really survive without a home? So my first thing is that, you know, if we don't have Colombia as host, might as well move into our office in Nairobi or some other place. So um, see it, uh today is, has three different strategies for each of the regions and with a very strong country focus. The global, international, international public goods, all the fantastic stories that we all believe and they're true, they don't apply that easy if we don't have the country for what, what, what's really happening on the, on the ground. So we in, initiated our story in Asia, introducing cassava into Asia 40 years ago, or introducing beans into Africa also 40 years ago. Uh, we have quite a bit of staff in both offices growing fast in Asia. Uh, but of course, our main area from the beginning has been Latin America. We hope to sign today, perhaps, a joint office agreement for Haiti. Uh, we have a large contingent of about 35 senior people in Managua, and our Central America sub-regional office. Headquarters in Cali. Uh, I just opened last week an uh, uh, office at SIP. We like to be inside the CGL centers or with the national partners. We are not a consulting shop. We want to be open an office all over like McDonald's or Starbucks. We want to be inside where we belong, to research. Um, so we have a small budget compared to CIMIT, and we have about 1,000 a a thousand people. So quite a bit of operation in, in uh, 53 countries and 21 offices. Now, the issue that, as a manager, I keep saying is, so what do we do? What do we do different in Latin America that we are not doing in the other regions? So we continue to focus on crops, our traditional crops, with some good impacts from the very beginning. Uh, I will go fast on this because you know, you, you have, you, you, you know, see it. We have a 2020 eco-efficient uh, strategy, as we call it, which is sustainable intensification uh, with the main objectives, part of the SRF or the CGR, nothing new. But in addition to our research areas, we develop these three new, we would call initiatives, something to pilot. We want to change the way the CGR is thinking, particularly in Latin America. So one is the Sustainable Food Systems Initiative that we've been working with the Ford Foundation and others. We work forever linking farmers to markets. I think it's time in Latin America to link far market to consumers. Why we are only always linking farmers to markets? If the 82% of Latin America lives in cities, 
we're missing the boat. I think we should continue to do that, but we don't work for farmers only. We work to improve policies, we work to advocacy, we work for many things. So the Food Lens is a new initiative. We are working uh, quite a bit on that one, trying to initiate. It's related to one of the CRPs, of course, but we want to get the CGR into more thinking. Uh, and I have a few slides on that. We are working on ecosystem action. We, for example, backstop the Ministry of Environment of Peru to have the water law. And you say, what is IMI? Well, I don't know what is IMI. IMI is in Sri Lanka. So we were there in Peru for many years, and I said, we should help Peru get a good water law. So we are working on ecosystem action, including water. And all the traditional forage work of SEAD, we call it now Livestock Plus, because, and we work with Uruguay, of course, we are not taking any territory from anybody, but we, we see forages as the newcomer. Nobody understands forages very well. They're not donors for forages. People think that grass is to play soccer, or you know, they don't know. So we say, no, forages fix carbon, they improve the soil, they improve feed, of course, for the revolution in livestock. So there are many things going on around land forage. Anyway, so we are exploring those initiatives, and I won't bother you too much with those, but they are coming very strong in Latin America. Um, and these are our programs. We have three research areas. We have 10 programs, and then we have a few cross-cutting things. This is all seen in one slide. But since we like beans so much, we keep only using the pictures of beans. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we, we have a, a large team on soils and landscapes. There's a lot of action coming on soils, restoration on landscape. We are heavily involved in WRI 2020 initiative where Mexico is part to find these 20 million hectares to be restored by 2020. Uh, a lot of soil, soil fertility management, uh, Bruno, we need to talk about other things related to what we call soils, but it's basically agronomy, sustainable intensification systems, and so on, and all the things that you see there, including climate. Um, so many projects. We have about 180 projects running at the time, which is a headache. And I would say, well, uh, there are some regional things going on in Latin America which you should be aware of. One is this restoration of the green landscape that I just mentioned. It was launched at the COP at Lima. It's been reinforced this week in, in Paris. Uh, I will show something about our new agrobiodiversity platform. We are building, as I joke about it, at the times of confusion and budget cuts, we are building. Anyway, we will see. The future time will tell if we are in the right track or not. We are working on sustainable food systems, and we have a much deeper country engagement with climate smart act practice. We all know that when you look at those maps, everything looks yellow, orange, and red 100 years from now. But 100 years from now, we won't be here. We won't. I can prove that. So what are we going to do in the next six months for rice producers in Colombia? That's, that's what is, what, what's hot. Everybody's working on climate. So we have a few things going on. I think we success. Our Masagro in Colombia is all based on climate smart <coughs> agricultural practices. So the sustainable food systems, just uh, I mentioned that we are working on that. We are very open at SEAT. If somebody is interested in sustainable food systems, which includes maize and wheat and many other things, let us know and we can join forces. We can fundraise together, we can do research together and so on. We are working on those topics. Uh, the first time ever in history that you have more than a billion people obese and you have more than a, or a little less than a billion people undernourished with all of that food waste. Uh, you know that. It's all about food. We, we've been working with National Geographic. We think we should open up the CGR black box, all of the secrets that we have for 50 years, and work with others. So we were working with the National Geographic. This is the EAT program that we just, uh, a month ago, exactly a month ago, uh, we had a big uh, en encounter. This is the, our Kellogg Auditorium at Seat. When you come and visit, uh, that's where we have the big meetings uh, to talk about this issue. But this is, this is what I wanted to show you about the National Geographic. Everybody knows, particularly those of you who travel a lot, that the diets are getting global, right? We, we all think to eat the same. So we track for 50 years, 50 crops in 50 countries to prove that. And the answer is yes. But at different speeds. You cannot read it, that's on purpose. Don't, don't read it now, but it's in the National Geographic. So this is here research with partners on how this globalization of diet is huge with huge implications for the future of food. And we are all about food, right? So, so we are working on that, on, that, on that theme. I think it has a huge 
uh, potential for the CGI to break out of the good old mold of the Green Revolution and other things. Um, so this is the one that we use quite a bit. We have posters about this. This is how we break ice. Uh, we many, uh, this is part of our research to show where food comes from and how it has traveled. I won't bother you here. I have documents to show how science has moved people, basically have moved food around uh, the world over time. Uh, so on that food part, this is what we are building. This is a render. It's not done yet. So far we have a sign. We have a sign as yet. Uh, it's, the building's not there yet, but the building will come hopefully near by the sign. Uh, we have two hectares of building for $25 million that we are not fundraising here. I know that this is not the right place to fundraise for that. I understand that, Bram, but you're laughing. But, but um, we think the gym barns are not seeds put in Tupperwares, as I joke sometimes, and put in the refrigerator forever, and nobody knows what we do with them. Nobody knows. I ask people, where does food come from? Oh, from the supermarket. Oh, from the refrigerator. They don't know. So what we're trying to build is a facility that sometimes we call it the Smithsonian part, which is the public relations, the training, the openness. When you walk there, you should get a tablet and walk with your family without interrupting science and see what's going on with agricultural biodiversity. And not only the sea gym barns. So I have invited SIP, I invite CIMIT, I invite everybody. Uh, Colombia has 20 gym barns. We are going to have copies of them also. So we are building something <laughs> that will improve our conservation. We, we think that our three collections of the 11 collections in the CGR are very well maintained and they are famous. Uh, but we want to improve the utilizations. They're not seen museums. We need to work on them, right? Uh, we want to, who's going to train the, the future creators of these gym banks? Wh where do you go to school to learn how to run a gym bank? Not to bag an Incan, and uh, I don't know. So. Well, so I think we in the CGI have a huge niche to do training for those curators of future because we've been that doing this for 50 years. So we are, we are trying to do that and then to have a massive public education uh, campaign. So it will look like this. You can walk with your families and uh, you can see all of this fantastic. This is a render done by fantastic Colombian architects. And uh, so, so this is what we are trying to build. Um, so there will be an education route, there will be a public information system, there will be many, many, many things. We hope to build this by our 50 years, which is only a year and a half from now. So we need to move fast. Um, where are we getting the money for this? At this time, right? It's migration in Europe, elections in the US, confusion in the CGR. Where do we get the money for this? So we started with the president of Colombia. We said, look, you are the president of Colombia. You are talking about peace. Peace is going to have to be based in rural development. Rural development is connected to all of this. So we got the first 10 million grant of the 25 from Colombia, but we don't have the check yet. We have a letter. But at least we have the letter. <laughs> it's signed by the president, and the president has a few years to go. So we are after that, that check there. And we have contribution from outside, and we are rallying the troops. To, we have a task force on fundraising to find the, the other 10 million that we are still missing, but we st still have 18 months to go. So anyway, I hope to open this up for the 50 years of SIAD, and you all will come smiling, remember this modest PowerPoint, and seeing the two hectares built. Uh, otherwise, there will be a different DG at SIAD uh, in two years. <laughs> um, so we are also engaging with countries. That's a totally different phenomenon. The CGR has always engaged with countries. It's nothing new that SIAD is doing different than CIMIT. But should we sit in defense when this peace process after 50 years of civil war in Colombia? I don't think so. I am one of the few 50 years Latin directors in the CG. So should we see? I don't think so. So yes, we write journal articles and we do great research. But this is the time to get dirty and go there. And just go there. Take the risk. High risk. My board was not very convinced, but I did my best. I just finished my board meeting, so I'm happy for a few more weeks. <laughs> and. So we need to work on that peace process, showing what the international community, not only see at you and SIP and many, and IFPRI, IFPRI, there's a lot of policy going on. To, to, so they're collecting $50 billion. We are not chasing the ambulance, but the Colombians are collecting $50 billion for the peace process. 
who is going to do the diagnostic of land use plan? Who is going to do the new cropping system for the future? Who is going to do the maize and beans systems in Colombia and the water and this? Chemonics? Who should do it? I think we in the CGR should play a role here. So we are working quite a bit. And that's another example of, uh, you have done it with Mexico, of course, that how the new paradigm in the CG should be working directly with this country focus, as we call it there. The other missing link in the CGR forever has been the private sector. We all have examples, of course, Simit being on the frontier on good contracts and good agreements with the private sector. So when the donors live in Latin America, what do we do? Because the private sector is coming, oh, uh, should we be scared and run away? On the contrary. So we have a, a thousand hectares. This is the, Seattle has 520 hectares. For those of you who know Seattle, here is the airport. And, and Cali is right here. So 10 hectares of buildings and labs at Seattle. And then we have 500 hectares of our INIFA, Corpo Ica, right here. So a dream, if you live, if you lift that fence, you have a campus of 1,000 hectares with all of those 500 PhDs. Because UN here, you don't see it, but there's a UN there. It's not the United Nations. That's Universidad Nacional. Universidad Nacional is the strongest university in Colombia. Public, they do PhDs, masters, right there, about agriculture. So anyway, we put this together as a Parque Bio Pacifico to incubate companies, to startups, to spin-offs, you got to do, you know, there are a few Koreans there studying, and there are Chinese, and there are a few people coming from the Pacific. Hopefully more will come. So if you know any Mexican company who wants to do, make some money in Colombia, they can land here. No, they don't need to set up an office, but they, they can connect with CGR Biotech or support services for research and do some businesses. Uh, we think that's another way of doing, breaking some of the ice in the good old CGR paradigms. So, this is only two years old, and we have only three or four projects, and it's not a SEAT park. SEAT is part of the park with the other uh, members. Uh, so you know what climate smart agriculture is. Uh, this is another example, Martin, of how we are engaging, bringing the good old CCAPs where we all participate into something which is tan tangible. Otherwise, there are PowerPoints, and you know, I joke about this sometimes. We are all emitting gases here. What's going on? So. Uh, we started with this. What's the most important for a Colombian? Coffee, right? So do we work in coffee? No, it's not a Monday crop of Seattle. So what? If coffee is the most important crop of the, our host country, and we don't say we don't have anything to add to coffee, we not, may not be in the map. So we were the first long time ago, a few years ago, uh, five, I think it was, who told the Colombians, look, you know what two degree mean in climate change? That means 440 meters. That means that your 500,000 coffee producers, meaning 5 million people, will have to move 500 meters in 25 years. Are you ready? Cost benefit, how much that cost? Unless you change the genome of the coffee tree. So we map the genome of the coffee tree. And we have the options. And that's the policy type of work that we should do combined. It started as a hobby. Coffee is not our crop, but it worked. So from there, we build this. This is a multi-million dollar, multi-year program. This is our Masagro, landing CCAS into a country and saying, all of that is CCAS up there. Now, this is what really could happen for you, for you, Colombia. Now we need the funding to do it. So this is Climate Smart Act in Colombia by crop, by region, with everybody involved, 800 plots. This is not CIA. We are coordinating, we are supporting, we provide technical backstopping, but there are many, many people working on this. Uh, a lot of hundred researchers will grow seven crops. Look, maize. So um, th this is an annual program that we renew every end of the year, and we do it again for another year. Sometimes it has been four or five million dollars a year. Sometimes it's two or three million. We go by results. It's not core. We go by, by a contract. But we do that. So if we want more maize, or we want more sustainable intensification, or we want more whatever CIMI has to offer in Colombia, you don't have to fly with us, but if you want, we can go together. At least we can open the doors and you can be part of this. And so that's another way of working in Latin America, landing these global programs that in the past we say we work globally and this is what I think you should be doing. We should be doing the opposite. Because we work globally, we say, okay, what is all of this benefit for Colombia? Uh, and so far it's working. 
So, and what is working? This is Andy Jarvis, our director on climate and policy. You, you may know him. Uh, so what's working in this agroclimatic forecast? People can read in their phones the temperature and how much it rains, but so what? Should I plant rice or not? What, what should I do with this and that? So we are working quite a bit with the private sector. Telephone, working together on how this agroclimatic forecast should look like in the future with some of those details. Uh, so far we are working on those crops. We meaning, if we are not, meaning the Maize Producer Association of Colombia with the universities. Pl plenty of space there to bring semen on board. But we also work with these associations. Most of them are out of our mandate. But we have a lot to provide, which is cross-cutting. It's capacity building, it's geography, it's gender, it's policy, it's all the things that we work. Um, and that's the change in suitability um, that, that we are extending, we are extending uh, CCAF's work in, in, in Central America. We have a joint project, all of us, in Nicaragua, remember? Nicaragua is an integration site. For those of you who follow the CGR evolving things, uh, we have 20 integration sites and a few less really integration plus plus sites. Uh, Nicaragua is the only one in Latin America and the Caribbean. And uh, so, so there, everybody's working. CIMIT is very active. CIAD is active. We're all active. That's another way of collaborating in Central America. We are way or we are challenged by beans. We think that CIMIT and CIAD should have worked together for a long time ago on the maize bean system. We all talk about it. We've been here in Mexico in 1978 working on beans. We repatriated 6,000 varieties when they were lost in Mexico back to the Gym Bank of Mexico on beans. So why don't we work together in those maize beans or in East Africa? Where they are we all have drought tolerant beans, right? And you have drought tolerant maize. And you know, there are many things that we can work together. We are waiting for the, somebody in the consortium or the donors to tell us and how we can just go ahead and do it. So Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and Nicaragua, I think, is, is, is something that unites us uh, Martin, in the sense, from Mexico to Colombia, we've been working in this Central American region, hardest hit by climate, weak institutions, hillside agriculture, everything, everything there, from restoration of landscapes all the way to training. Great opportunity. Um, and that's an example of what we think it could be done in 2025. Uh, this is uh, just a diagnostic of what's going on in the countries. We don't have time to get too, too academic. Uh, but this is, these are the studies that we are doing on Climate Smart Act for these countries, which is only a diagnostic to say th we think this may happen, to open up the box to say, can we work together? Um, so we have quite a bit of diagnostic, as usual. You know, we, we've done the research, and we think these things are going to happen. Uh, now we need the research to uh, you know, work on those challenges. Um, because maize and beans uh, is an important part of the CIMIT CIAD potential collaboration. I, I am more on beans these days, but I, you know, we have same examples of the other crops that we work. But I insist on beans because it makes sense here at CIMIT. Uh, the fame, if you read The Economist, uh, if you are jet lag and you find the CIAD article in The Economist, it's true. We do have that. We do have. Uh, the four degrees Celsius uh, drought tolerant, heat, heat tolerant beans. In addition to Harvest Plus, that we are all part of Harvest Plus. So there are iron fortified heat tolerant beans. Anyway, very targeted. Um, so for Mexico, as I mentioned today to the, in, the, in the Ministry, of, uh, Ministry of, of Agriculture, we have done a lot from afar with only $20,000 from the World Bank, we produce uh, 15 country profiles of all you wanted to know about climate change and never there to ask. Uh, meaning not only what's going to happen, but what's the possibility for crops or for livestock. And I have a few examples of Mexico here that I can share with you. I won't go into the details. So having this diagnostic, it shows all the opportunity to do more research it opens up the appetite of many people who say, oh, research is already done. That was done by CIMI a long time ago, the university or Chapingo. 
it, it opens up a new and say, oh, these are the challenges. So why don't we do this and that? Uh, so many, many good examples. And I have copies here. And you can find them in the SIA website. But I have copies here. And this is the practices that I meant. So what should we do for coffee, or for sugar cane, or for beans, or for maize, or for cattle? What's the opportunity? The widest, the wider this is, the, the most important. So zero pastoral systems, OK. So well, why don't we work together a little more between the seeds of forages and the ecrats on agroforestry and so on? And you have some examples there. Um, Site-specific, we are a lot about site-specific and big data these days. So there's a quite a bit of opportunity of drip irrigation for some of these crops. Uh, so it's very practical. This is done for mainly with producer associations on our mind. Governments, of course, but producers in our mind. Because they pick it up. Uh, and they may be our donors, if you want to call it, or partners of the future. Um, so we did one for Chiapas, one for the entire Mexico, one for Chiapas, with the same results, different. Uh, Chiapas and Oaxaca and all the places, Nayarit, that we've been working in the past is very tropical, so we've been working more on the, on the south. Uh, so they are very, very specific, even for Sinaloa. Uh, very good examples. How is, that's another question that all policymakers want to do, and the political short, uh, the times are very short. How is land use going to change in the future? Do you have options for land use? Can you map this? And everybody can map that. So we are trying to put together the research together with the mapping and the projections. So anyway, uh, and the example of best practices. There. So all of this is already done. That doesn't mean they're perfect, they're to be proved. But at least in Mexico, we have done all of this work that we put public, of course, is open, that you can use when you do your dialogue with the Mexican counterparts. So the message is that we've been working outside of our mandate, and we are thriving outside our mandate. We tripled our budget. We had 250 people in the last five years doing magic realism, sometimes forgetting a little about the CGR and moving on. If there is a crisis, that's a crisis. We go bilateral. We, we, we look new donors. There's more money than before. And remember, when I study agriculture in Uruguay, People joke about it, say, you're going to be a taxi driver. There's no future in agriculture. I say, well, I like to drive. You know, there's no problem. <laughs> Look what happened 30 years after. Everything is about agriculture. Anyway, so Nicaragua, meeting point for the CGR. See is already there. There was a meeting two weeks ago. Some of you were there uh, with Elcio Guimaraes and others. And, uh, and uh, we, we, we have. We cannot fail at this integration side. Independent what the definition of the CGR will never agree. There's always a new track and change program document on what the integration plus plus means. That's okay. Nicaragua, you know, we have more CRPs in Nicaragua than PhDs in INTA. They don't have enough cars to go to the airport and pick us up. So if we don't coordinate in Nicaragua, what else? So that's that's a key a key story that we cannot fail in Nicaragua. We have an office with 35 people. You can use it. We can't even charge you for the Wi-Fi. Come, let's work together. I, I'm sure you're in the, re, in, the, in the area. But that's an area that all of these centers are already and CRPs are active. And every CRP will come and say, this is what the CRP targets are and the indicators that my donors would like to do. We're trying to break that myth and work a little more thinking from a Nicaraguan perspective. What do they really need from these CRPs? Because by the time that they, they listen about the good old humid tropics that now are part of the agri-food system CRPs, or they listen about all our beautiful CRPs, they're going to be dead. Who, who, who has the time to read all this PowerPoint from the CRPs if you are working in a national program? So anyway, we need to integrate. I'm fully behind. And see is leading that one. Hopefully, we see me help. Uh, so that's my last slide. Just to, I'm, I'm sure you have better ideas. So just to discuss a few things. What, what is maize bean system? Yeah, sure, you do maize bean system, we do bean system, but the farming systems are the same, they're connected, okay. So should we work more on soil fertility management on those maize bean systems? Why not? We have 50 people working on soils. They're all running projects. So why don't we, you know, we are managers sometimes. I don't know if we have power or authority or both, Martin, sometimes, but we, we can use it. Uh, you, you are in your honeymoon, you can use it. Yeah. You are a new DG, you can use it. So should we work in heat tolerance? We have the same, the same pipelines. Uh, how about we, we are already working in Harvest Plus on both. Uh, conservation ag and big data is a very important thing for us. I used to be an agronomist a long time ago. 
So yes, we ch keep changing the names, but the, the agronomy is the art of combining everything into reality on the ground. That's agronomy, sustainable intensification. So a lot of this, we got UN prices for data. We have this big data platform that never saw the light, but is written, I'm looking at Marion here, who knows about it. If we have, if we like what we wrote for that platform, we should do it anyway without any CGI involvement. We, we can do it, right? If two or three centers want to do it with countries, why, why, why don't we? Uh, all of these climate smart art technologies and practices, we, we, got, we have proven in one country that we cannot fail because it's my host country, that this Zika thing works if, you are adapt, if it is adapted by the private sector, the universities, and the real people, like farmers. So can we expand that and add to that climate smart all the sustainable intensification techniques and information that we have? And on the country focus, I think Mexico is a must. We've been working here on and off, a little project forever. Why don't we do something more? I'm not coming here to compete for fundraising with CIMI, to be very clear, I'm not. Uh, I want to have dinner with Martin tonight, so I'm doing this on purpose. So, so I, I, I think Mexico can afford to invest in international system more than CIMI. And by the way, if you saw the smiles this morning, we cannot believe the smiles from the Zagarpa people this morning when they saw the two DGs together doing the same pitch. I was complimenting CIMI, and CIMI was complimenting CIA. They love it. They say, we never saw this before. And this is not only Pula Galeri, right? This is not to show that we are together in Zagarpas. We, I think we can do, so Mexico to me is crucial. Central America and Haiti. We have always been working in Haiti. We've been working in Cuba for 25 years with embargo. Imagine now, all the people, the senior people, the Cuba research station have been trained at SEAT. We still work with them in biotech and other things. That's, if you are interested in Cuba, we can work together, and I put Kenya there because it's our hub uh, in Africa, and we, you are there very active, and we can do country focus in Kenya. The World Bank just have a $200 million loan to Calro. Should we wait and just sign MOUs and see each other having a beer in Nairobi or do something more concrete? So that's what, what I'm after, to see if I can pass the message to incentivate that a crazy DG living in Cali, Colombia is, is pitching here to say, can we do it together? Because I, when I see my regional director for Africa, I say, are you working with CIMI? Oh yeah, I saw great people at CIMI. I say, no, no, no. I mean, do we have something going on here for the benefit of Kenya together with CIMI? And that's, I think, is the target that we should continue to do together. For us, genetic gains, Jean-Marcel was visiting SEAT, and as usual, when I talk with Jean-Marcel, I learned a lot. We, we are experts in doing great things on the CGR, and whenever people know what they are, we change the name. And we change the name. We used to have system-wide programs, then we had challenge programs, now we have CRPs, and then tomorrow, who knows? But this has worked. Now, we have several initiatives, uh, not duplicating yet, but several ideas that could come together. And I see the good old generation challenge program. Today, they integrated breathing platform, thank you, uh, as a great thing, which is funded, it has a board, it has leadership, it has good management, it's at CIMIT, by the way, so that's another opportunity. We are, we are all, all the way forward for, for genetic gains, and we are collaborating with Marianne and others. Marianne is already writing emails to see it because we've been chatting at lunch how to, do, how to do these initiatives together. So that's another area that unites us. Um, so with that, I invite you to come to the Taj Mahal of the CGR, the most beautiful campus in the CGR, without any philanthropy money that you have. No, you, you have a great facilities, but you don't have that Spanish colonial campus that we have. So anyway, <laughs> you're welcome to come to see us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ruben. Um, who has been uh, at SIAT? See, there you go. Wow. See, there you go. So there's a good solid basis for the collaboration. And uh, I'm very pleased also, Ruben, uh, with your approach. It's also my approach as CG centers. When we work together, we are much stronger and we can really make a big move. So, um, and I think uh, maybe you can go one slide back. 
because I think that's uh, very interesting for the discussion. Now, just about the site integration, I don't know if everybody knows what's going on, but the idea was basically for the next round of CRPs that in specific countries where we can measure impact through statistics, that there we, uh, where we work with a lot of CG centers that we really start operating together, starting from the livelihoods of the people and then go to the crops. Not thinking like uh, every problem in a country is a beans problem when you're from Seattle, or every problem in the country is a maize or a wheat problem when you come from Simit, right? Like uh, when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Um, so questions and remarks. I think there are quite some options, quite some issues brought up by, uh, by Ruben. Who? Olaf. Okay, speak up. Yeah, Ruben, you mentioned a budget of 125 million. How does that break up in terms of global Latin America, Africa, and Asia? And then especially for Latin America, how much is of that is really bilateral and kind of some of the new funding you were alluding to? And then finally, what is your collaboration with Brazil and Argentina, if any? Good questions. I need another hour. No, I so. Of the 125, we have about, um, I would say, 60% CRP related because we are involved in 12 CRPs. Because we have, yeah, and I'm still alive. But um, we, we, had, um, we have 10 programs all the way from cassava to climate, from soils to forages. So if you see the portfolio of CRPs, it, it had to say for CIA if you have the soil program not to be involved in WLE and so on. So it's about 60% the budget related to CRP, so we are heavily cut or, or you know, affected when you have something going on in the CRP. Um, we have, uh, so the other 40% is doing the three and bilateral, mainly bilateral. We are growing the bilateral part as much as, uh, as we can. If I can make a parenthesis on the funding part, uh, it could be of help. Uh, three years ago, three and a half years ago, the CGR consortium and the fund council and all the high powers of the CGR uh, landed into Seattle for a big meeting, and the chair, which I won't name, but the chair at the time of the fund council said, forget about fundraising. You do research, we will get the funding for you, we come to any window, don't worry. La that night I went home, as I mentioned today, and I said, tomorrow I want to start building my fundraising office. <laughs> Three years ago. I think I am ahead, I know I'm not a CIMIT. You know, I'm also you know, a respectable CIMIT, but, uh, I think we are, we are ahead. I have a fantastic fundraising, communication, contract money all together, and that office is, 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 is bringing out some harvest on the, on the fundraising. From, from Latin America, very little, very little outside of Colombia. Very, so our work in Central America has always been funded by donors. Colombia is funded by Colombia. Brazil, we have a great collaboration. At the time of the creation of Embrapa, CIA put all the tropical information into Embrapa. We have a great collaboration with Embrapa, but the collaboration is only collaboration. Sometimes we have a sabbatical. I've been trying, I'm a good friend of the president of Embrapa, and say, why don't we go together to Africa with the forages, the ones that CIA took from Africa, developed in Colombia, and gave for free to Brazil to develop the savannas of Brazil. No, now it's not in the phone yet. So we are, we are trying, we are trying. With Argentina, we work, started to work on climate change. We are now waiting for the new government, starting a week, to agriculture will be booming in Argentina again, where 80% of the wheat is coming from your germplasm, and they haven't found that seed yet, uh, as much as I think. So why don't we do something together in, in, in Argentina? But so far, it's a sporadic, it's a project. It's something say, can you help us on climate change? And we help. Can you help us in value chain? And we help. Small visit. So not much, not much. And we, that's why we want to replicate the Colombia experience, which is huge, uh, not only financially, but in terms of impact. And the way to replicate, should I come to Mexico, go to Peru on, on the back of SIP or CIMIT and fundraise? I think it's totally crazy. First of all, because 30 years ago I was here. So I think we should really work together. It's much more credible, uh, much more credible uh, to, to work together. So great opportunity. Now, you haven't asked, but I will ask you why we're not doing much more CIMIT, and I'm going this way, maize in Colombia. I'm going to ask the same question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, Colombia is importing corn. I mean, you, you have an office in my campus. 
Come on, let, let's, you know, that's another opportunity. Colombia is booming, Peru is booming, e economically, I mean, there's a lot of science going on. A lot, and all of the young generation of scientists working in this research system, they, they, don't, they, they don't know too much about the CGR because for the last 20 years, the CGR has been moving much more east into Africa and Asia than the good old times of Latin America in the CG. So I think, I think we only work 60, 40, mainly Colombia, great opportunities in three, four other countries. Now, we decided already this morning that now you are here in Mexico uh, as, as soon as possible. I will also go uh, to, uh, maybe with you also, Prezana, uh, uh, and Bram, of course, to, uh, to uh, Colombia, also talk with the minister to see if we can also contribute there. Now, in that way, we can really be complementary in that sense. And, you know, the, the cake can always be made bigger. Slicing up the cake is always a tough issue, but making it bigger is... Uh, there's also one other mechanism why you made your cake bigger, right? It's with the declining funds. You were a bit lucky with the country where you were. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, the, you know, we cannot fire anybody at Seattle yet, and um, we are looking at 2016, how it looks like. Uh, we don't use the, what I call the landmower approach of always, you know, shaving shaving programs until they don't have any science debt anymore, like in other places. So what we're trying to do is cut all the administration. We went down to 11% overhead at Seattle after $4 million cut in the admin. Uh, and uh, now we are to the bone. We cannot reduce anything else, and I don't want to get into every center is different, and I'm sure you know, you're thinking about it, what to do. So um, the foreign exchange has helped a lot, Seattle because the peso against the dollar devaluated and we have income in dollars and we, we have 650 staff at headquarters. So that, that has cushioned us, that has cushioned us, uh, that has helped. At the right time was the CGR, so, so we, we will see. But I, I don't think, I, you know, I think small is beautiful in the sense that if you have a good idea on research, and I can prove it with the case of Colombia, you can grow from that small idea into a multi-million dollar, $50 billion dollars. And I know where they are because the IDB is collecting the peace fund in Bogota. Fifty billion dollars are there. So don't don't come all together to us fundraising in Bogota. You know, please give me a call and we can go together. And not everything will be for research. But how about if half a billion is invest of those fifty into our, our applied agricultural research? Don't we have a case to make in Colombia? And the same will happen in other places. Argentina will will, will be back in a year or two asking for international research that they've been dormant for 12 years. I always give the example also that worldwide we spend 200 billion a year in subsidizing fossil fuels. 200 billion a year. So, and then we see how important food systems are. Prasanna. Yeah, first of all, Ruben, many, many thanks. Uh, it's a very, very inspiring and very stimulating, stimulating lecture. And my personal thanks on behalf of CIMIT also for hosting us for so many years. CIMIT Global Maze Program has a presence in Colombia, thanks to CIAT for so many decades. And such a wonderful germplasm developed and which has impact not just in Colombia, but elsewhere in the world. These varieties have gone to Nepal, Bhutan, and many other countries, the acid soil tolerant materials, the GLS resistant materials. You highlighted very strongly about maize bean systems uh, you, will be, you may not be surprised to know that CIMIT has invested almost $1 million out of its own windows or core, window one, window two core, to just keep sustaining the CIMIT Columbia office. And the return in terms of bilateral projects or window three is hardly perhaps 200 to $300,000 uh, or whatever in the last three, four years. Terribly underinvested, but still we are painstakingly continuing the program. Uh, so many efforts in the recent years, but nothing has borne fruits, especially in Colombia. What can we do in order to change this scenario? You, maize is so important, beans are so important, uh, maize coffee systems, acid soil tolerant materials, all are recognized to be important, yet we are unable to draw a kind of investment that can transform the system in Colombia or elsewhere in, in uh, Southern yeah. America. What can we do yeah. together? Well, you know, we can discuss bilateral, perhaps not everybody's interested in maize, but what we will, I, my, my target, Martin, Here we are. Okay. <laughs> uh, my, my target, Mar Martin, is that I, I, I wouldn't like to have seen it as a tenant. We don't need tenants. So you've been a tenant for too long. You have one person there, a small office, a 
and then subsidizing for, in a country which is booming, is plenty of money, despite being an oil country with the commodity prices down. So I, 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 I don't want to get into CIMIT manage, management, but I, I, I will say, FENALSE, the producer association of maize, I talk with them all the time. They are in the Climate Smart Program with me. They're, those are the maize producer associations. They have the funding, their own private sector funding. So it's the approach, it's the approach. I think producer association is the way to go. Colombia is the only country in Latin America. If you read AgriMonitor, if you are really jet lag or you want to really go to sleep, check the AgriMonitor in the IDB, which is the best database that we created a long time ago. And you see which country in Latin America is subsidizing policy distortion for each of the crops. Colombia is the only country which is totally confused and has 80% of the agricultural budget for price support, which is, I used to be an economist. The worst thing that you can do to, you know, to increase innovation, you have to have open market with some framework, of course, and invest in, in innovation. So despite all of that, uh, and that's why they're importing maize. So I think it's, it's the approach. I would talk with producer associations. I make a case, a consistent case, not just a visit on and off to Bogota. I, I would sit, I, I went 18 times to Bogota until I saw the president of, of, of Colombia. And I have these Basque genes, which are very kind of resilient. <laughs> and, uh, but you, you have to, I think, I hate to you, it's a matter of presence. So the DG will come. Uh, we, we go together to the Minister of Agriculture, and the Minister of Agriculture will ask Martin, how come we are importing maize and you are the DG of the maize center? They will ask the same question. So, so opportunity, huge opportunity. The Llanos of Colombia, four million hectares, yeah, the no infrastructure, the acid soil, but four million hectares of new agriculture. So people are thinking maize and soybean. Yeah, there are big companies setting up there that they're asking us all the time, do you know anything about maize? And we say, yeah, yeah, there is a CIMI office down there, down in my office, or we send them to CIMI. So great opportunity, they all come and ask. So big demand, I'm still not certain that we cannot do much more maize research for development in, in Colombia than, than we have done in the past. Bill gives us a follow up, definitely, right? Other questions, remarks? Yeah, Hans? Okay, uh, Ruben, now I have to ask you as uh, Uruguayan, uh -oh. more than the DG of SEAT. Uh, Argentina, Uruguay, and Chile are from next year on high income countries according to the World Bank. Uh, all of them, as you have mentioned before, I mean, we have a tremendous relation with past and wheat. But we have made great efforts to, to develop a relation, but you also pointed out folks, I mean, now you are high income countries. Uh, so can you not come out something uh, where we could, you have to fund it, but we maybe we would like to work with you. What would be wrong that we cannot bring these countries together to act together? What would be wrong? Or they don't want to work together? No, no, I, I, I think the lab, I mean, the senior people at the INTA, INIA, INIA, depending which country you are, the, the very senior people who re remember the good old times of the CGR in Latin America, they all love CIMIT or CIAD or CIP. They all love that. The junior ones don't know us. So I, that's, that's the, the changing paradigm. In the good old times, when Santa Claus give you core money every December and you say, oh, I had $10 million, should I work in wheat or in maize in Uruguay? So you say, no, let's work in wheat because there are many pests and disease to wheat in Uruguay. Let's, that's the, the time that we need to forget. The new times, to me, is sit with India, Uruguay, which has a few million dollars for maize and wheat research, and say, we are CIMIT. How about doing, do you know that we are doing this and this? Do you know our research partner? Do you know that we can combine big data with soils, sustainable intensification, plus maize and wheat and so on? And the same with INTA. INTA Argentina to me is, the, is, is as important as Colombia. You know, I mean, none of these countries are the future countries. None of these countries are donor countries. And we should thrive in those countries with a new paradigm. Yes, it's risky and perhaps it's just a, a hypothesis. That's why I put it modestly as a hypothesis, but I think we can do it. Your case in Mexico, our case in Colombia, exactly. are examples of how to replicate this many times. But the approach has to be different. In the good old times, we used to be a little arrogant, to be frank, in the sense that you know the national programs say, oh, your salary, you have a car, you travel, you do you know, international centers, all of this. All of that is gone. People don't remember that anymore. So we should start again fresh, say, okay, we are seeing here. We are on business. 
We don't have any donor money. We are here as a potential partner. The seed companies in Argentina who have benefited, they've been rich, getting royalties and, you know, from your joint plasma. Instead of fighting them to pay you, I will sit with them on a business dinner and have some deals and say how we look into the future. Because in the future, perhaps, you know, everybody will go into hybrid wheat or into whatever. In my times at SEA, the, all the talk about maize was OPVs. Now I wanted to do hybrids, and I was pushed around because I said, you should do hybrids. Anyway, so <laughs> Latin America is changing a lot, and I think a new dialogue, uh, fresh DG with the honeymoon saying, I'm new, don't tell me about the past, we should move on. New dialogue. Argentina is ready. Yeah, they are cutting to. the 40% tax on top of the taxes that they used to have. They killed agriculture in Argentina. They're releasing all of that in two weeks. So it's booming. In the, um, a, a fresh one million hectares of crop was planted in Argentina last month. So anyway, it's just an example. With India, Chile is a little different because they are much more uh, fragmented into many, many crops, including fruits and things that we don't work so much in the city. Yeah. Now what Hans, you say, what did we do wrong? Yeah. I think more the question is, did we do anything? No, we all, yes, we have. I mean, we were down many, many times, also at the G level, at least in the last five years, three times, but we somehow could not bring them back together. Because one country alone was not uh, doing it. With Uruguay, we have now a phenotyping platform in Uruguay, uh, which, which we to show our presence there. Okay. But we want to go beyond that, and I mean, Argentina, I mean, two weeks ago, was, was people doing it. Okay. Uh, maybe we have to make new and I want to more optimistic on Argentina again. So, I think it's difficult. Yes. Because of strong movement. But this might be something interesting to do together as well. Yeah. We have, uh, in Latin America, we have uh, three CG centers, and uh, maybe you can op we can operate together with uh, some of those countries, and really, and then not country by country, but also see if you can do jointly something with those countries. Exactly. So we have all the time round tables with INTA, INIAS, and so on. Uh, you know, why don't we do it together in, in a round table? So can, can we offer something as a, as a collective here, as a CG collective, a little more? Because they know, and sometimes they play the game that we all separate, and we go to Buenos Aires all in different times, and we ask for money to Inter, and that, nothing happens. So we go together, it could be a, a better opportunity. That's no, interesting, because we were just uh, at a meeting in Cancun of the ministers of agriculture of all the Americas, all the American countries, and uh, so all the countries say, like in Brazil, like we have Embrapa, and Embrapa can solve all your problems in the other countries as well. But uh, Julio, the former uh, chair of our board, was there as well, and he made a very strong point indicating that, hey, we have three international centers, or basically if you take North America as well, four in the CG centers, international centers that can really be meaningful for uh, agriculture in the, on the continent. And um, so there was a lot of nodding there as well. So they realized that and maybe a right time to go for it because donors are not funding us for work in Latin America so much. We need new business models. You are doing similar things as we are doing already uh, with public-private partnerships, thinking it through. We discussed it last week as well. So it might be interesting to see how you can team up together. But the first action point will be that um, I will visit Colombia also as soon as possible as a follow-up from this one, and also make sure that these type of things start to work. You have the last word, because you were mentioned, right? So uh, yeah, yeah. you had a special I case. Think, Good. Think Speak up. Yes, uh, Ruben, thanks a lot for the presentation. Great talk. A lot of very good ideas. Uh, if I can just come back on this entrepreneurial spirit, which I think you have knowing the difficult environment that we are living in those days, and the special condition of Latin America, No, oh, that's, that's uh, I think that's the way forward. That's the way forward. Now, instead of trying to change the SMTAs and the treaty and discussing all the rules with all our 15 legal offices plus the consortium legal office and all of that, but still remaining legal, as usual, what, what we found, we found is that if you have a park, you know, so that's the idea of the creation of the park. It's not SEAT, SEAT is part of the park. The park is more than SEAT. 
So through the park, which has an independent entity, you can have IP rules, park IP rules. And that's what we're trying to do. So today we have, we have 20 year experience with RISE. 18 countries are part of FLAR, the Latin American, you, you don't know too much about the RISE world, but uh, there is a RISE world out there in Latin America, which is huge. And there are half of those countries are represented by seed companies. They use our germplasm, they make money, and they fund us back. So the RISE example is a fantastic platform that can be replicated to other crops. Why not a wheat fund? Why not? That's the only way. 20 years ago, when the SIA was going to close the RISE program, we found somebody at SIA, smart, found this way to do. So we have today a contract with Dow Agrochemicals. We are proud of it. But that's a big multinational working on forages. Uh, and they're, they're really doing well. It's very hard to produce forage seeds. So we go to the people who know. And we have a small contract with them. And they make big money in Latin America and so on. We have a contract with Waxi Cassava with Ingridium. Uh, the next revolution on Waxi is coming from Cassava. We have, we have three or four of those big ones. But I think, yeah, we have those. But the important part of the new ones are the medium-sized private companies that we can do in Latin America. The startups, then the spin-offs. Uh, that's why I put the, 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 the idea. The park is not our park. So if you see a good business, I think that's what the CGI should do. Aren't we, at the end, if you read the SRF in and out 10 times, don't we have to show impact? How are we are going to grow those impact without the private sector? I don't get it. There's no pathway to me without private sector. I, I'm biased. But I don't think the part, are we going to recreate all the extension services in Latin America to have all those pathways to deliver what? So I think the private sector is the way to go. We haven't seen it as great ideas and has done great contracts too. So one thing that we can do is to have shared services. Why don't we share a little more intelligence, CMIT, CR, and SIP on, the, on how to do IP? Why don't we do protective patenting in the, in the CGR and we give everything for free? We should at least have protective patent so nobody can make money out of us and they can say, this is CMIT germplasm. Anyway, I know there are so many ways. We are stuck in that thing that we cannot do it and we keep business as usual, but I think something must happen. So we are trying with the park. Our only a uh, new, new baby there to try is that park, which is open I, you know, to CIMIT if you want to join. CIMIT is already part of the park, by the way, <laughs> because you're inside CIA. Well, it's interesting to see that we are developing along similar lines, right? In my former life, uh, the major income for free money was uh, from strawberries. Two million in my institution got every year from royalties type of things. And that's really, you know, free money. Nobody's saying what you got to do with it, right? Exactly. So we are thinking along similar lines, and let's make sure that also with the centers, uh, we just have Bob Ziegler here from Erie, and Matthew is thinking along similar lines, Matthew Morel, the new DG of, uh, of Erie as well, and also with the different centers that we see how we can develop basically a new CGIR, because uh, the CGIR was coming from a different way of thinking. When I saw all the seats also being sent around the world for free to everybody, yeah. I was also like flabbergasted, like, can we still do this? And uh, Hopefully we can still do this in the future as well, but we need to think about this. Ruben, thank you so much for, for being here. Um, quite a few people may want, after the seminar, also to, to catch up with you on, uh, on some uh, specific uh, things, but definitely there will be follow-up on this and we will keep you informed. Yeah, we thank you. I, I thank you very much. I, I, I lower the CMIT productivity for an hour and 15 minutes. I'm very sorry about that. You can go back to work. But I want, I want to just provoke a few things that, that despite some confusion in the CG or despite some commodity prices up and down and changes in government, we can really, the next 50 years of the CG are going to be much better than the past. I'm not a philosopher. I, I don't have futurology to, to prove it. But, but, you know, if we engage with the private sector and we do something together, instead of having CMIT and then SEAT and then SIP, I, I think that's what the countries are needing in the region. So you're all invited to come to SEAT. Please, uh, you know, let's work together and hopefully this is more than a pitch from a DG who comes and visits. Let's, let's do something together. And you know who is who at CIA too, otherwise we can help. To connect without, without us, you know, to freely connect with the research that we are doing. Thank you. Thanks for the inspiration. Thank Big you. hand. Thank you.